Hey everyone, I'm Prez. Welcome back to Cabrillo. This is episode 9, and today we're going to be staying on um, you know, the, the south side of the river here, and uh, we're going to be building the first streetcar suburb in Cabrillo. We're going to discuss what a streetcar suburb is, and you'll come to know Claremont as a really important neighborhood in the city, but first we have to hop into Inspiration Station where we take a look at the inspiration for the episode. So streetcar suburbs like St. John's here in Portland were connected to central business districts with streetcar lines before those lines were ripped out um, when cars became prominent and uh, they're a lot different from normal suburbs. Like you'll notice Rockridge here in Oakland has a nice medium density mix of residential and commercial um, with pretty tightly packed lots and all of these streetcar suburbs, other than the Portland example, obviously, are um, from Berkeley and Oakland, and they were the result of a streetcar system called the Key System, which I'll link a video in the description from um, Viscoigelhausen and Ur Interurban Era, their Presidio Bay series, which you should be watching if you watch this series. It's basically chronicling the history of the Bay Area through city skylines. The Key System used to run throughout the East Bay, and you could see its legacy like all throughout, the, all throughout Berkeley and Oakland, all of these avenues that you see that have tightly packed commercial buildings with low setbacks, you know, the space between the building and the street. That's all uh, from uh, the electric streetcar era before cars took over. Um, and you could see the history of it still. And, and I want to demonstrate that here in Cabrillo. So this streetcar suburb here, I wanted to do something a little unique. And I'm sure this exists, but um, I, I really wanted to have this one avenue split off into two one-way streets um, because this area is it was going to have a freeway in it. And the freeway was canceled. Um, you know the whole story. I've got an episode where we build a a park on the cancelled freeway, but traffic engineers have been trying to make up for the fact that there's no freeway in South Cabrillo here, um, and no freeway in the really high density um, district of Claremont. So what they've done is they turned these two previously two-way streets um, into very wide four-lane one-way streets. Now they have bike lanes on them, but they're still um, very wide streets, and what they're trying to do is provide a high level of service, which is kind of jargon speak for... Um, for just efficiency of moving cars um, throughout the area, which is not necessarily good for all of the people who live in these neighborhoods who have to deal with higher speed cars. Um, but traffic engineers, they're definitely not, they haven't been kicked out of Cabrillo yet. So I'm trying to demonstrate their legacy here. Um, and maybe this area will be transformed back into two-way streets in the future. But uniquely, the... Um, the, the street that's kind of further towards the north, the one on the bottom there, um, that goes towards the hill, it is going to be a, a, a street that is fundamentally representative of a, a streetcar suburb. It's, it's going to have very low setback commercial on it. Uh, as you'll see, that other street, since it was transformed after streetcars were removed and um, traffic engineers had to move more cars, it's actually going to be residential for the most part, um, and in pretty high density, but um, some older, some newer, but um, decently high, de high density residential. It's not like both of those streets are going to be commercial streets. You're going to have the one that had the streetcar on it before, and then the other one that was kind of turned into a big arterial um, road to move cars um, that used to not be, that used to just be a neighborhood street paralleling this other one. Um, so it'll be interesting to demonstrate that as, as we go, but that's you know, you know, a unique feature I wanted to add to this um, a streetcar suburb, just because I feel like it, it demonstrates the constraints that um, traffic engineers who were kind of put in charge of planning Cabrillo post-war, which they shouldn't have been, um, that kind of demonstrates what they ended up doing to make make do with the fact that they couldn't get their freeway put in. I am really happy with how I kind of uh, transitioned this grid into a much messier grid. Um, and you'll notice that the streets that I, I build throughout the um, this area, for the most part, definitely not all the way over to the edge of the, um, the plane here, but uh, a lot of these streets, they're going to kind of follow a, a, like a hub and spoke kind of format because a lot of these are going to be like we're gonna have multiple streetcar suburbs in cabrillo and not only in this part of the map but also in another part of the map that i'm planning kind of across the mountain from downtown or across the hill there are going to be a lot more streetcar suburbs over there and they're going to follow that kind of hub and spoke format uh, where you have the spokes 
um, radiating, radiating out from the central city, which would be the, the um, larger avenues that have commercial uh, buildings on them, low setbacks, really beautiful, quaint places. Um, but then you'll have neighborhood streets around them, but they'll all radiate out from the, cent the central city. So it's not like we're going to have tons of cul-de-sacs in this area because this is an older suburb. I, I wanted to um, demonstrate how it grew organically around the, the spokes, the, the streets that um, used to carry streetcars. Um, and you'll notice newer suburbs don't really look like this, and, that, and that's because people are able to get around a lot um, more efficiently with with cars, but that, that that increases their mobility, like their their ability to move from um, one place in uh, in space and time to another um, completely in a vacuum. Like if it, moving from like you can move forty miles a lot easier in a car than you can on a bike or uh, walking or anything like that. But cars make things further apart as well, so places become less accessible. You're not able to access them by transit or by bike or by foot as easily, and then only cars can close that gap. And that's why these streetcar suburbs are such beautiful little places. And I wanted to recommend a video, um, this because this I ended up building this district at a really good time, because um, Not Just Bikes, who's an excellent um, city planning YouTuber who lives in the Netherlands and kind of explains um, what urban planning is good and what is not, and how the Dutch have done very well um, in planning their cities. Uh, I'd, re I'd like to recommend a video from him, kind of explaining what um, what streetcar suburbs are and why they're so desirable right now, um, and what we can do um, to recognize that um, and why they're so good. You know, uh, and not just bikes. Just released this video last week as I'm recording this or something. Um, so this was a really good time for me to also work on a streetcar suburb, um, but it's not just because that video came out. Also, Seabud made some excellent uh, new homes that are, you know, beautiful homes that you might find in Oakland in these streetcar suburbs. You're, you're going to see them um, debut in a little bit um, as we move into the residential areas around this this spoke, this um, this street, which is Claremont Avenue here. Another thing, um, as we're expanding the city, it'd be great if you folks would uh, let me know what you want to see me build in the comments below, um, because I'm building a lot more right now than I really have in a, in a long time. I'm trying to expand the city really quickly, and I think I'm doing a really good job. This is currently my favorite city I've ever made, um, and mostly just because I know what's going to come of it um, as I expand even more. But I really think I'm doing an okay job here building quickly, but also maintaining a good level of realism and detail and being purposeful about what I'm, I'm building. But it'd be great if you'd suggest some, some builds for me to do. But beyond that, just themes you want me to tackle, like the themes we discussed in this episode historically, um, or walkability, just themes like that that you think would be interesting for me to tackle in a video, and maybe even how you want me to tackle them, like what kind of builds would, um, would demonstrate those themes well. Because um, that's what I'm trying to do with this series, just talk about, talk about urban planning, talk about urban history, but also um, build at the same time. I, I'm, and I feel like it, you can you can watch my videos. I, I'm not. I wouldn't be offended if you didn't even watch the time lapse and you just had this on in the background while you're playing City Skylines. I, I do that a lot of the time, and just like use City Skylines videos as a, almost a podcast, like a short form podcast, talking about um, talking about the city that we're building, but also other things. And um, you know, however you watch um, my videos. Um, I, I just appreciate it a lot, and um, mostly I'm just trying to add some value with the, the topics that we, we discuss here. And um, yeah, just let me know how I'm doing as well, because I haven't really expanded into this this um, more podcasty form of of making um, videos with all these really important topics as much in the in the past as I, I am right now. So um, suggestions, feedback, much appreciated uh, as we as we continue here. Anyway, it is, it, it's building theme time. I'm going to be zoning in this city. Um, sorry to the folks who don't want me to. I, I'm doing it. Uh, I did that in the Columbia City as well, and I've learned a little bit. There's uh, Advanced Building Level Control is a mod that really helps out with this um, and allows you to make buildings spawn that are any different level um, and set all as historical, that kind of thing. And, and it really helps to zone districts like that. So I, um, I'm going to be using that. And I'm trying to hone my craft here with zoning, and I hope I can make a tutorial in the future exactly on, on how I zone um, areas realistically like this. Because I, I really feel like, just because zoning zoning is 
you know, if I'm being honest, completely unrealistic in this game. It doesn't it doesn't do a good job of, of representing how districts grow or really anything. It just produces, uh, unless you really do a lot of engineering to make it work right, um, it, it produces unrealistic areas. Um, so I'm trying to figure out exactly how to do it right, because there are ways. Um, and if you have suggestions as well that maybe I haven't considered, let me know in the comments. But to expand a city that this 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 big, I, we're gonna need to zone. Um, and right now we're we're building a high school, so the folks don't complain in the comments that I don't actually provide services. It's also important to place landmarks in a district like this. This high school, I'm assuming, is kind of newer looking, um, not new new, but um, uh, it looks like a high school that was remodeled in the past. Um, but I also do want to build some really robust. Uh, like Art Deco high schools um, in various parts of the city, just older buildings that are um, really substantial and um, ground the districts they're in very well. And I'm also I'm placing these these fields over here as well, just in these large. It's nice to, uh, when I'm uh, when I was planning the road layout out, I, I left a couple places intentionally um, empty of of um, roads just so that I could build larger structures like this. We'll also build a library um, in, I mean, I placed it in this episode. We'll work on it more in the future. It's a, it's a vanilla building, but zoning doesn't work quite as well in these areas that, I mean, the, the grid just, it's really messed up here. It's going to be a lot easier to zone in areas with perfect grids. Um, and also my theme manager wasn't like my building themes was, I, it might have just been some mod conflict, but for some reason it was it's still including buildings when, uh, th that I had actually removed from the theme that were initially in the theme that I really didn't want because they had vanilla hedges and stuff. Um, so I just had to do this all pretty manually. There's also, um, you'll, you'll notice I will upgrade most of these roads um, at, towards the end of the episode to the Kloss Suburban Roads. Um, the, the ones with no yellow lines in the middle because uh, they have grass medians, they look a little more worn. Um, it's just the grids were messing up whenever I tried to use those, so I had to do that manually after I finished everything up. Um, and yeah, th this street that we're kind of placing buildings along right now is is definitely a street that was has been widened um, over over time a little bit and also it, it's completely transformed into two lanes in each direction so you're trying to move cars throughout this area um, which probably annoys residents a lot as it should to have um, kind of a main avenue in front of their house but uh, over here we're, we're moving back to Claremont Avenue and, and this is so you see this light rail line in here this is gonna you know, continue going along um, kind of to, to the west of the city we're not going to get light rails running in this episode or anything. I just wanted to place this here um, just to show you what it's going to look like and also so I didn't have to go back in the future, but kind of splits off from that main avenue and goes in what used to be these larger back lots um, in all, all of these areas. The city, to expand the light rail system, had to acquire the lands to do so. Um, and now these commercial buildings have smaller back lots and the residential buildings have smaller backyards, uh, but there's a light rail line back there now. So, uh, there's that. Um, and I'm finishing up here by just kind of placing trees along Claremont Avenue. And I also place them along the other Avenue, which I have yet to name. But yeah, you can see th th this area is filled with beautiful little corner stores and stuff, uh, places that you can walk to from your house. Like you don't have to live in Manhattan to be able to walk to the store. And it's, that's, you know, some... A big myth is that you need extremely high density to sustain walkability. Like streetcar suburbs, for a lot of people, are the right answer, and they become really desirable. And not just bikes explains why in his um, in his video that I'll you know link in the description. These corner stores, and then also all of the other San Francisco buildings by Seabud that I placed in this episode are, are just amazing, and they're really like these two buildings right here, just glorious buildings. I actually pre-detailed my own versions of them just so that I could place them more quickly. Um, here and I'll link those in the description as well. Um, but yeah, you can you can see what this district kind of looks like on the grounds. It's it's a really lively place, a real mix of incomes as well. Like it's not very exclusive. It's probably becoming more exclusive, but there isn't too much new development other than some high rises along the main avenue. Just a lot of these 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 suburbs in here are um, you know, kind of mixed zoning. Some apartments, some um, some single family residential, but you can just see how most of the development is is along this former streetcar corridor and now light rail corridor, and it's it's being upzoned to accommodate transit users. 
But anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed. Let me know what you think of Claremont. Would you live here? Like, is this the right density for you? I mean, I, I love the idea of living in a streetcar suburb. It's it's a really beautiful, um, you know, it's a really beautiful density where you can get the the quietness of of you know, residential neighborhoods, but also the convenience of being able to walk to the store. Um, and I, I kind of, you know, when I'm in Berkeley, I, I live in that kind of place. And it's it's a it's way different than living in a place where you you have to get in a car to go anywhere. Um, there's so many opportunities to just to walk around and um, do your errands by foot here, even though it's a, it's a suburb. This is a suburb. Um, and let me know what you thought of this episode. And uh, just quick shout out to some patrons, Christian Compton, James Brown, Joe Fox, Oliver Gansberg, and Rodney Green. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. If you want to download the save game or get early access to videos or anything like that, become a patron or there's some also some other benefits for uh, YouTube members. Check that out as well. Um, but hopefully you all enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one and um, have a good day.